Okay, so welcome to this second video on magnetic resonance imaging. Right, so what we're now going to talk about is, uh, is the principles that underlie uh, magnetic resonance imaging, uh, which is nuclear magnetic resonance. Okay, so what we're going to look at is a proton. So here is a proton. Now, protons are one of the constituents of atoms. Specifically, they are one of the constituents of the nucleus of atoms, along with neutrons. And they have a positive charge. So this proton has a positive charge. Now, the proton has more properties than just a charge. It has a mass as well, so it, has, it feels gravity. It has a positive charge, which means it feels the electric field. But it also has a tiny magnetic dipole moment. Okay, so basically it acts like a tiny little magnet. It has a north pole and a south pole. So what we, we can represent its magnetic dipole moment uh, with, as I've said in the previous video, we can represent it with an vector. We can represent it with an arrow uh, which has a direction and a magnitude. So this represents uh, the magnetic dipole moment of this proton magnetic dipole moment. Okay, right. Uh, so, what this means is that when you put a proton into a magnetic field, it is going to interact with that magnetic field, and it's going to try and align its magnetic dipole moment with uh, the magnetic field. Okay, so let's take an external magnetic field. So let's say this is the external magnetic field here, which is going to be... Um, all going vertically upwards. So basically, I shouldn't probably be drawing it like this. Instead, I should be drawing it like every little point has a vector ascribed to it. And it basically, uh, all of these magnetic field vectors are going to point upwards. So we're putting it in this magnetic field, which is basically just uh, every single point in space has a vector pointing in a single direction. And all of those vectors have exactly the same length, they have the same magnitude. So basically, when you put this proton into uh, this magnetic field, well, its magnetic dipole moment initially could have been in whatever direction you like, basically. But once you um, put it into this external magnetic field, what it will do is it will try to align itself with the magnetic field, so it will change its magnetic uh, dipole moment so that its magnetic dipole moment becomes aligned with that magnetic field. Now, the phenomenon of nuclear magnetic resonance is that you can make this proton turn around. You can make it take on this uh, form, where the magnetic dipole moment basically is exactly in the opposite direction to um, the uh, to the field uh, the, to the magnetic field, so you can turn it from having its magnetic dipole moment aligned with the magnetic field to having its magnetic dipole exactly pointing in the opposite direction to uh, the magnetic field. Now, to do that, you have to put in a certain amount of energy. So this this process requires a certain amount of energy, a certain energy transition, which I will call delta E. So you have to put in a certain amount of energy to take it from this low energy state, so I'll call this this low energy state, to this high energy state. Okay. So if we wanted to draw this on a graph, what we could do is we could have, well, let me just finish labeling before I draw the graph, high energy state here. Okay, so if we wanted to draw this on a graph, then um, often people will show you graphs that look like this, where they have two lines, one showing you the higher energy state, and one showing you the lower energy state, and then they will show this difference here as being delta E. So basically, this higher bar here represents this uh, this uh, proton which has its magnetic dipole moment perfectly pointing in the exact opposite direction to the direction of the magnetic field. And this bottom line represents the state where the proton has its magnetic dipole moment pointing in the direction of the magnetic field here. Okay, so um, there is an exact energy that you need in or to gain in order to move from that state to that state. 
Now, basically, what you can do is you can, ex if you want to try and make this transition, what you can do is you can expose your proton, which will be in the low energy state, um, ideally, um, to a certain amount of radiation, basically. So you can uh, expose it to radiation. So here comes our electromagnetic wave. So this is an EM wave. And basically, um, uh, we know from physics that the energy of an electromagnetic wave is actually a function of its frequency. So it's equal to uh, h nu, where nu denotes its frequency.